Um, today I'm going to tie a, a fairly big uh, pack fly. Um, I'm going to tie a, a very very nice uh, green uh, pack fly using uh, some some pretty cool uh, materials. Um, this is not a very difficult fly, but it's a fly that is well proven and has a lot of pack on its uh, its conscience. Um, we're going to use some uh, some bucktail and chartreuse. This is going to be a green fly, and uh, we're going to use some sculpin wool. A lot of flash. We're going to use some uh, flash abu and holographic chartreuse, uh, also some flash abu in red, uh, and some uh, some uh, chartreuse ostrich plumes. And then we're going to use, as you can see, a uh, uh, partridge uh, uh, universal predator in size 4.0, uh, and then some uh, some shanks, uh, and finally some fish masks. Well. The basic idea about this fly is you need uh, to have a bundle of uh, uh, of a fairly fairly large, fairly rugged, fairly big um, uh, bucktail to to support and to make this fly uh, really really has a very have a, have a very very large profile in the water. So what I'm going to do first off is is I'm going to take a fairly large bundle of a uh, fairly large bundle. Of, um, of bucktail and then I'm going to strip all the very short fibers out of this. Normally when I tie pike flies I, <laughs> I don't throw away materials because well basically yeah, the more materials you have on there <laughs> the better it is but for this you uh, you, you need to, to strip out um, to trim out all the uh, all the very short uh, all the very short fibers all the very short hairs. So then you have something uh, that looks like this a fairly large bundle, a uh, very nice bucktail, and then I'm gonna make a very a big base uh, for my um, for my bucktail, a big base of tying thread to make sure that this bucktail will stay exactly where I put it, like so. Then I'm gonna tie this down uh, so it's pointing forward using a couple of uh, a couple of loose turns and then apply a lot of pressure and here I really mean a lot of pressure you want to be absolutely 100% certain that this stays exactly where it is you don't want this to go anywhere you just want it to be there cutting off some of this not a lot of that it basically it doesn't uh, do anything except for just being there and what you want to do is you want to take a, a small pen uh, and then Put it over the shank and just force all of your bucktail backwards, like so. I'm just going to force all my bucktail backwards. Forcing every strand of bucktail as far back as I can. Because I want this to stand out of course, but I also want it to be where I want it to be. So then I'm taking my tying thread and I'm not applying it on to and on top of the bucktail. I'm just tying closer and closer to the bucktail so that I'm forcing it backwards. I'm not tying on top of the bucktail, I'm just forcing it backwards, like so. Which will make the bucktail stand out kind of like in a in a halo or a, or a corona, whatever the English word is. Um, and uh, and this is very good uh, because this will support the rest of my materials and make sure the rest of my materials will be spread out and uh, and be as as loud and as big and as noisy as I want it to be. So it's going to be right there in the face of uh, of a, hopefully a large pike, which uh, will have no choice but to uh, to inhale it. So next of all, that was actually the the. The, the most difficult part of, of this fly. Next of all, I'm going to take a, a bundle of uh, big fly fiber. For the, if, if any of you uh, does not know big fly fiber, it's probably uh, the coolest material ever made, uh, at least for pike flies. It has this uh, very uh, nice and smooth and, and very thin end, and then it's curly a lot uh, up in, uh, in the other end, giving it uh, uh, 
a nice feel and and uh, and adding a lot of a, a lot of movement and uh, erratic movement in the water. Just gonna tie a bundle of this down, and as I said before, this bundle is gonna be held in place and lifted because of uh, of the bucktail. Just hang that as you can see it's going to be lifted very very nicely like so then I'm taking my um, chartreuse holographic uh, uh, flashable taking a fairly large bundle of this this is uh, uh, this, the most vibrant and, and coolest looking flash I've ever gotten my, laid by hands on. I, I really, really enjoy using uh, using this, and uh, and I must say the guys at Hedron they uh, sure sure know what they're doing. Flashaboo is just well beyond cool. So taking all of this and just just laying it over here but I'm trying what I'm what I'm going for is is I want it again to be like a corona so I want it to be all the way around the uh, the shank that I'm using here all the way around the shank like so and as you can see when I'm going to pull this out this is going to be well, a lot of different a lot of different places all the way around yeah. and then for a good measure I'm just gonna take the 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 small the shorter strands that is pointing forward and I'm gonna take these as well and just turn backwards and tie down when you do it like that you make sure that your flash is, is completely and 100% fastened because um, because uh, it is it is doubly tied down and uh, and that gives a lot of uh, a lot of stability and also makes sure that that your flash material even though it is uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, smooth and and uh, and has a tendency to to get trapped in the pike's teeth and get drawn out when you when you fasten it doubly then uh, then you you don't risk that as much so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some some red uh, some red uh, holographic flashaboo in uh, in the, the magnum uh, the magnum size and the magnum is <laughs> truly magnum as you can see this is 54 centimeters long um, or 20 inches which I must say is rather impress impressive this is the longest uh, flash material I've come across and uh, well it's just great. I'm taking a bundle of this again making sure that none of these strands are of even length by just pulling a bit in 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 the different strands like before taking this and uh, making sure that it's all the way around the entire uh, entire body here like so So it's it's almost evenly distributed throughout uh, on every side and, and every angle all the way around and uh, I'm gonna take the stuff that is pointing forward again trying to distribute it distribute it evenly like so and fastening it once more. without getting a lot of other materials in there so now we're getting somewhere for this uh, this uh, this fly I think we have used uh, some flesh now but uh, but I'm not satisfied so I'm gonna take one last bundle of uh, of uh, chartreuse uh, flesh here the narrow flashaboo brand and the narrow flashaboo or just the the original flashaboo again pulling out this, the individual strands so that it's not even in length taking all this and just whipping it in the air to make sure that every fiber is, is where I want it to be and then I'm gonna take this 
try to get it to be all the way around, making a few uh, a few turns that is not uh, strong before I, I make sure that's that is where I want it, like so. And I must say, well, um, uh, green is, is is one of my absolutely old all time favorites for for pike. I don't know about musky, but I'm pretty sure it's the same. Um, uh, I recently read a study uh, about pike, which uh, which actually stated something I find I found uh, rather peculiar because I, I have always imagined that uh, the most important important uh, uh, prey. For, for pike was roach, but this study indicated that that was not the, the case. The most important uh, 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 prey for, for pike was, uh, was, uh, was perch, which I find uh, a bit interesting and also could explain why these, uh, these green flies uh, are, are so great. So uh, what we could do, we could have I've made a bleeding roach fly, so why not just name this the, the, bleeding, uh, the bleeding perch or the Christmas tree? Well, <laughs> See the colors here, the red and the green, are <laughs> kind of kind of nice for a Christmas tree fly as well. So, the second to last material is these uh, these ostrich hurls, uh, which are very very long. You want to go for uh, for uh, for the magnum, the magnum, uh, the magnum ostrich pearl, ostrich hurls. These are a bit more expensive, but as you can see, these are also magnificent and uh, and truly truly amazing and big and just. Well, uh, very very lively in the water and good looking and well, <laughs> the list goes on. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a bunch of the, these, uh, just cutting along while while I'm I'm holding everything, cutting along the uh, the feather stem, so I get something like this, making sure trying to to even these in length a bit. Well, it's it's. It's not possible to make them completely uniform in length, but but at least a little. Spreading this out over the entire fly here, like so. Tying this bundle down, using a lot of thread again. And these will move uh, very nice in the water, and they have kind of the same effect as uh, uh, on the fly as uh, as uh, if, uh, grizzly feathers or something like that. So this is this is definitely a, a, a fairly cheap alternative to uh, to the uh, to the to these to the long saddle fibers. The long saddle fibers look well, yeah. Let's face it, they look like a million bucks, but they also almost cost a million bucks. So. So uh, if if you want to go a bit budget, then uh, these feathers are the way to go. They are pretty pretty cool. I hope this looks as cool on your side as it does on mine because I'm <laughs> pretty excited and pretty pretty uh, uh, turned on by this. <laughs> Regret to say, but that's the case. Oh well. <laughs> The final step is we're going to use uh, some of this uh, this sculpin wool, this ram's wool. Um, again, I'm going for the green one because that fits uh, fairly good with the rest of the color theme on <laughs> on this fly. So I'm taking a fairly large bundle, something like this. Going to cut some of this off so it's not going to be as big, like so. Maybe a bit more over here. The reason I'm uh, I'm tying this down so it's pointing forward is I want my my head to uh, to be the one that that turns it over the fly. So I'm making a whip finish here. Fastening that one, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these. Fish masks from uh, from Flyman, very cool. And this is a size uh, 10, 10 millimeter. And I'm gonna take this and use this instead of using a lot of UV curing uh, glue or something like that. Then these heads just will fit straight on there, and it uh, looks 
that's good but are so much easier to, to apply and to use and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a small head out in front here of a tying thread to make sure that this head is, is staying exactly where I want it to be this is a fairly big head so I need to apply a bit more thread than well, I could have used some could actually have used some dubbing for this just gonna take a bit of this uh, ramp wool, this sculpin wool just gonna apply that as dubbing up here to make sure that uh, that my head do stay where I want it to be does that, does that look decent? I'm not sure Well, I think actually that works. Making another whip finish. And now the head is securely fastened. And I can uh, take some, uh, some super glue and attach the eye. This is, uh, this is a, f uh, a flyman eye as well in 10 millimeter that fits the head uh, in, uh, in the color fire. A nice color, a nice orange red color for for a nice, nice, uh, <laughs> wicked, wicked fly. The uh, the bleeding roach, or uh, <laughs> or the Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's uh, it's it's pretty good, pretty good. I fished a lot with this types of flies, but this exact pattern I've not uh, fished with uh, yet. But I can assure you this will definitely do the trick. I think I'm gonna use this uh, very soon and uh, hopefully uh, by the time this video is uploaded I can I can show you that this uh, this works. Well, those were the words. Thank you for listening.